Hello, welcome to PSG. I'm Dylan, and I'm gonna look way too close at the BlizzCon Line 2021's Overwatch 2 panel to try and find some secrets. First up in the intro, we have a few tiny things revealed in the gameplay's UI. We've got what looks like to be a gauntlet-style hero mission where you have to survive a gate hack, an early look at the canister hero mission mode, some sort of health bar or something here, and, uh, critical errors. This is a work in progress game here, fellas. We also get our first look at Sojourn, who could fill a whole video of analysis. I'm not gonna go over her moveset and stuff here. We see a talent for Soldier 76 that increases the healing power of Biotic Field. I'll talk about talents later. A new quick slashy Null Sector Omnic, and of course, the most important and revealing, who is in this ship that Reinhardt and May are jumping into? It's the totally new characters Brigitte, Mercy, Winston, and Sojourn or Genji, that might be Genji, but it's probably Sojourn. It's hard to tell. Very important stuff. Surprisingly, there's not a whole lot to glean from going frame by frame in the PvP section here. The only gameplay thing I could find is that Reinhardt's barrier has 800 health instead of the 1600 it currently has. This is a pretty big nerf, but it makes sense when you consider the buffs to his fire strike and charge, and lower shield health definitely entices a Reinhardt to be more aggressive, which is what the devs want tanks to do moving forward. They're trying to treat them as more brawlers than actual, like, tanking damage people. Which makes sense, I'm down for that. Other than that, in this section, I don't know, Hotel Fellini here in the Rome map? That's a real place. Also, it looks like the New York City map was called Manhattan in concept stages at some point. Very cool. Uh, moving on. This section has some interesting changes to capture points that are evident in the UI. Jeff mentions later that 2CP could be removed or replaced, which would be great, but at this point it looks like it's still in. Although on Hanamura here, the active area of the point appears much smaller, which is something that we've seen before with Overwatch 2, but it still seems strange. It honestly kind of makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> also looking at the UI, it looks like the three-stage tick mechanic has been removed, but in a later clip, it's back on Eichenwald's first point, so who knows. Speaking of payload maps like Eichenwald, there's a great UI change in this clip where the number of people pushing the payload is displayed behind its icon instead of in front of it, which reads much better in my opinion. You're pushing the payload forward, not pulling it forward. Not the scatter area. Yeah, I don't know what the hell this is. Maybe it's a talent that's just reusing Hanzo's old scatter arrow icon or it's a bug, who knows? In this section, we also see some names for hero mission types, retrieval, payload, holdout, and escape, and an option for difficulty level once you click on a mission. Also worth noting that this map seems to be shared between hero and story missions with a toggle in the top left. There's also what looks like to be a new temporary health type color coded green. Everyone starts with it in this hero mission, but a couple cuts later, it's gone and they're back to their normal health, so it's most likely just a health buff everyone gets at the start of the match. Maybe it's a group talent thing or a difficulty option? Not sure. Speaking of green, this blurry thing up here is green. Usually this is where the player's level is displayed, but back in 2019, they did talk about how they're removing level portraits, so maybe the thing under this blur is what's replacing that feature. Last thing of semi-note is this FPS counter in this clip. Pretty much every other FPS counter in this video is well above playable, but this one is consistently around 40 FPS, which could be concerning, but the game is at least a year out, and we have no idea what state it's in in terms of optimization or what kind of hardware the devs use to play test, so you could probably just disregard this one. Okay, so as expected, there's a lot to unpack in this section, but before we get into that, let's take a look at this scene. We do see the ticker on the news broadcast mentioned the Rio story mission featured at BlizzCon 2019's reveal, and a mention of the state of things in Toronto. Perhaps this scene is a transition between the Rio and Toronto missions, but the weird thing here is that among Mercy, Soldier 76, and Reinhardt is Junkrat. Does Junkrat join Overwatch at some point, or is this just some weird team comp that the devs were using at the time? Also, to be fair, Soldier isn't a part of Overwatch at this point in the story either, as far as we know, so his presence here is similarly weird, just not as strange as racist junk man over there. It's also possible that the reason he's there is because he is talked about later by the devs in this section when they mention his talent that lets him dual wield grenade launchers. Anyway, the rest of this section features a ton of quick clips of Reinhardt, Soldier 76, and Mercy's talent trees, so we're gonna go through those rapid fire, starting with Reinhardt. Baldrich's stand gives Reinhardt a bunch of armor when his barrier breaks. Barrier Boon heals Reinhardt when his barrier takes damage. Shield Bash is exactly what it sounds like. It gives Rein Brigitte's Shield Bash ability. Puncture makes enemies 
enemies who survive a pin take more damage for a few seconds. Get down increases the damage a pin does if said pin happens near an ally. Armor up increases Reinhardt's base armor. All armor converts Rein's base health into base armor, making him more resilient. Fractured makes victims of Earth Shatter stay down longer and take more damage while in this state. Brigitte's Weld makes Reinhardt take less damage while armored. Cute. Overhead Smash makes a successful third consecutive hammer swing stun the target and deal more damage. Icy Pains makes charge deal more damage to frozen enemies, which ties into the Ice Strike talent that he is shown using here. It's also worth noting that in this clip, Ryan's shield has 1200 health, and his hero health slash armor is noticeably lower. This is most likely just a talent we have yet to see details on, or some earlier change to Reinhardt in general. Moving on to Soldier 76, we've got Inexorable Trigger, which adds more damage to Soldier's rifle the longer the trigger is held down, Tactical Advantage, which adds more damage to his ult. We've got an interesting one with target-rich environment. It increases the duration of Soldier's ult with each elimination. Maybe you could make a build that keeps his ult up indefinitely. Deathly Accurate, which grants mini crits for a few seconds after an elimination is done with a crit, like a headshot or something similar. We've got Combat Veteran, which increases Soldier's health. Morale Boost, which reduces Biotic Field's cooldown the first time an ally is healed in it. Another case where, with a good build, you could probably have Biotic Field up indefinitely. And another strange thing that I found, which I thought was worth mentioning here, is that at various points in this entire video, Soldier 76's health is set at 201, which is probably just a weird debugging thing, or a bug or something, but I, I figured it was worth mentioning. And lastly, we've got Mercy. She doesn't have much, but we do have Rapid Response here, which increases the range and movement speed of Guardian Angel. We've got Outright reach, which increases the effective range of Mercy's staff, and this talent isn't named, but it's the old version of her res from, like, the original game, meaning she can resurrect multiple allies at once instead of just one at a time. Interestingly, it no longer is instant like it used to be, it now has a cast time, albeit a much faster one. Maybe this cast time can also be reduced with talents. And that's everything I could find in this section, but it was a very dense area to analyze, so let me know if you caught something I didn't. I couldn't find anything of note here. I don't know, this guy looks like he's watching himself. Or just another dev with an orange hat. Is that anything? This scene has Overwatch 1's UI and tracer design. The puller is hot and could step on- Techware. Yeah, there's, there's nothing below the surface in this section. Okay, so this section has a lot of storyboards flashed on screen quickly throughout it. Not a ton can be gleaned from these, and I'm not trying to accurately predict the timeline and events of Overwatch 2's campaign, but we can see that a couple people join up with Overwatch here. Zarya, Diva, Baptiste, McCree, and Farah are all seen in this big group shot, along with the people we've already seen in plenty of Overwatch 2 material. So it looks like they join Overwatch at some point. There's also a couple interesting things found in the subtitles of these clips. Sojourn calls this Omnic a survivor, most likely due to the null sector invasion here. This line, spoken by what I assume is a villain because of, you know, what it says, has its name section removed. Perhaps this is a new character? If so, it's most likely a Talon agent since this looks like the same setting as the scene where Talon is confronting Genji and Zenyatta, who is standing. We also see some Talon grunts here, which is neat. We know Talon is another faction we'll be fighting like Null Sector, but we haven't seen much from them until now. Last couple bits here, these two civilians are named. Maybe that means they're important to the story. Could also just mean they're important to this specific escort mission. Who knows? And lastly, this list in the dev software notates certain entries as PvE only, meaning that Rio, at the very least, will most likely have a PvP version, as well as its story PvE version. This can probably be extended to other PvE maps. I doubt they're just not going to use those big maps for both modes. That's all I could find. Hopefully I found something interesting or at least save you the time of going frame by frame in this to read, uh, you know, talent paragraphs and stuff. Let me know in the comments if you found something I couldn't. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, and tune in for more PSG content down the road. Thanks so much for watching.